B7, also known as biotin. Now, biotin can be synthesized in the gut by bacteria and can be found in food sources um, such as liver, kidney, egg yolk, yeast, milk, and meat. Uh, this one, how I kind of remember it too, is it's not really prevalent in fruits and vegetables. It's a poor source in fruits and vegetables with the exception of mushrooms, cauliflower, and soybeans. Um, so that's kind of unique about it. It is known as the carbon dioxide carrier. So what it does is it activates and releases carbon dioxide. So it is a coenzyme and a key player in fatty acid synthesis. And actually in gluconeogenesis, it um, helps pyruvate go to oxaloacetate. So just something to think about as we go into the biochemistry sections. Um, an interesting fact about biotin, so in so if you ate a diet of raw egg whites for a really long period of time, um, it could create a deficiency because in the egg white, um, there is something called avidin, advid, um, which is a protein in raw egg whites, and it basically is it innovate, inactivates biotin. So interesting fact there. So deficiency is low, but if there is a deficiency, you might see muscle pain, dermatitis, pariasis, um, glottitis, um, alopecia, and gritty eyes, grittiness underneath the eyes, like right here. So the big kind of indicator I think of when I think of biotin is, um, you know, it's kind of like a beauty product a lot of times, or you see it as being advertised for skin and nails and hair. Well, alopecia is like the thinning of hair and issues with your hair. And then you have your gritty eye look, your dermatitis or dry skin. So deficient, so to help not be deficient, you would take biotin and essentially it would help um, relieve some of those symptoms if you were deficient in it, even though deficiencies are rare. Um, but that is our biotin, vitamin B7. It is the carbon dioxide carrier and helps pyruvate, go to oxaloacetate and gluconeogenesis. And a deficiency is seen with alopecia. Um, and that's my big takeaways for B7.